Hello, reformers, and welcome back to Gekko Kujo 3.1. Now, when we left off, we had just taken out an enemy vassal very, very close by to Katsuyama Castle. And, well, we took a lot of losses, you know, during that fight, and it was necessary for us to go away, restore ourselves, and then come back. And, you know the reason for that? Well, I actually had 64, I believe. I had 64 troops available for the siege here and as you can tell the garrison they have 255 so if I were to launch an attack against the garrison here it would probably end in a very big loss and that's not really good is it no, that's not really good okay so yeah we we successfully snuck in there. I thought that was rather hilarious. Okay. Yeah, we're not going to sneak in. I don't think that's necessary. Anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to send in agents. And it's going to take six hours. I have 17 of them, so it's only going to take six hours to complete, which is fantastic. Oh, my. There's another vassal. I'm a little bit worried about him. Okay. No, it seems like we are within luck. Now, this is the problem here. If we do this and we fail, then that vassal is going to take advantage and is going to do all kinds of mean things to us. So hopefully, we will not fail. We're probably going to get a rally though, aren't we? We're not? We're not going to get a rally? Okay, well, we only have a minus two battle advantage, so I suppose that is to be expected. Now, I did go back to Sado and I have retrieved a bunch of new units, mostly high tier things. But I do have a couple of these veteran Jimon Monk Warriors. I personally feel like the Monk Warriors are maybe a little bit better than the other things. Okay, so yeah, we need to kill this gate. As you can see, the first gate is down to 43% strength. We're doing, we're doing a, a reasonable job here. I, I don't even know whether you're supposed to damage it, to be honest. I mean, it doesn't seem like any of us is actually hitting it. I mean, am I just hitting it, or do I need to hit it? Maybe I don't, maybe I do, who knows. But... What I do know is that I have gained the two companions from the two neutral villages that we gained in the previous episode. You know, that we you know actually took, quote-unquote. We, we kind of didn't really capture them, but kind of. You know, we just cleared them out, basically. And I have those two companions, and they're basically blank slates. As we all know, they are all blank slates. And yes, hopefully I'm going to be getting them some pretty decent gear soon enough. But obviously, as you can see, most of the... You know, most of the companions that we gained from those villages and from those castles and mansions and things, they are all relatively bad. I mean, obviously they are they are pretty bad because they're, they're very low in terms of their strength. They don't have a lot of gear and obviously I, I have to equip them with the best stuff. So hopefully we're going to be able to do that. As you can see, we're actually doing reasonably well. I'm, I'm quite surprised. Obviously I did say that I have a number of Asakura Master Archers, and obviously we do have those Horse Archers as well that are very good. And this is also, oh yeah, I, I, I did actually neglect to comment on the fact that this is a new mechanic, I believe. Ow. I'm gonna need to move. If I get, if I get, if I just stay here, I'm gonna die, but yeah. This is a new mechanic. These gates are new mechanics because in the previous version of Gekakuja that I played, there were no gates. Yeah, there were no gates, and so you had to, you, you could just literally run wherever you so desired. Now, this is actually a really, really cool aspect, in my opinion, because that, it just makes it so much more, shall we say, immersive and atmospheric, because you think to yourself, okay, these guys are definitely going to have some kind of gates, aren't they? They're not just going to allow the enemy force just to run in wherever they so desire, are they? No, they're not. They're just just—they're going to have gates and things that can stop the enemy force from advancing. And that's exactly what they have. And I just killed one of our own companions. Terribly sorry about that, Bafunkai. Bafunkai? I don't even know, but... Yeah, hopefully we're going to be able to get past all of these. Obviously, the main problem I'm having at the moment is that we have mainly archers, and dealing with the gates and the units behind those gates is very difficult when you have primarily archers. So that's a bit of a mistake on my part, but it's okay. It's okay. I think we're, I think we're actually going to be fine. Yeah, kill him. Yes, thank you very much. Okay, so maybe I can get out my bow and see if I can just snipe these guys. Yeah, there's a nice headshot. 
Maybe I can get another one. It's actually really difficult to shoot with this bow with this particular animation because your arm comes into view and blocks off most of your line of sight. So as you can see there, I have to wait until it is fully drawn unless I feel the force, you know, or use some kind of spiritual kind of thing to kind of tell me what's going on there. But yeah, I'm, I'm having a couple of problems actually hitting these guys. Am I hitting too 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 far up? I have no idea where the arrows... Oh, no, never mind. I did get a headshot there. Okay. I'm actually just going to head up there. I think it's probably better for me to head up there. Uh, it's probably too late now, actually. But, yeah, I probably should have headed up there much, much earlier because it then means that I would have been able to... Oh, hello. I thought that guy was dead. I thought he was a corpse. But, yeah, then I would have been able to interrupt the archers relatively easily. That was a master gunner. He actually seemed to be pretty decent. Nagako. Nagako is getting some levels there as well. Pretty happy with that. Okay, so now this is this is rather hilarious. I find it super hilarious that <laughs> that they are just they are just like, mm, yes, I can very much easily block this amazingly big two-handed sword. Yeah, I'm I'm not entirely sure how he was able to do that, but I suppose he was. Now the main problem I'm foreseeing here at the end is their Hatamoto cavalry and the various other high-tier units that they have available. Now, we are receiving reinforcements, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to tell my people to, you know, hold position back here. This is a tactic that I used to use in the old version of Gekukujo. think it could probably be quite effective here as well. As you can see, we are being eliminated by the banner carriers, I'm actually pretty sad about getting killed by the banner carriers, but, well, what can you do, really? I mean, you just gotta kind of just take it, because obviously they do blunt damage, so they're not really gonna do much. They can kill us. I mean, well, they can knock us out. They can't actually kill us, so it's not really a big deal. But, yeah, we're just gonna try our very best here until our forces arrive. Our new forces, should we say. And then... We're going to make our way over and maybe do a little bit of archery supremacy. Because I have 20 archers. It might be nice to use those 20 archers to be a little bit effective. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place everyone here. Place the archers there. And then we're going to see if we can get a little bit of extra efficiency out of our units. Because as you can see, there's 50 against 50. Ah. Yeah. I was really hoping that that would not happen, but I got killed by a skirmisher. Not entirely sure what it was, but now everyone is just going to charge in again, and it might very well be a loss at this point, and that's very bad. If it is a loss, that vassal is going to take advantage and probably chase us down, because I don't know whether we'll have pathfinding at that point, but I suppose we'll be a little bit quicker due to the amount of units that we've lost, but as you can see, there's just so many people here, so many people, and... Our guys, our forces here really needed Bruce Beartield on the fields of battle to lead them to a decisive victory. Although I have lost quite a few units so far, I don't think that that's going to be the end of our aggression here. As you can see, most of our units are actually making it to the archery tower. But the problem is they're not interrupting these guys over here. I mean, this guy's still shooting away, and he's still killing people. As you can see, he just killed a ninja. He also killed a Miyoshi Hatamoto guard. And these guys are just standing... What? Why Why are they just standing there? Why are these archers... Oh, no. I know I told them to hold position, but when I die, they're told to charge in. They are told to charge in, so I'm not entirely sure what's going on. Oh, and it seems like we have a slight issue. Yeah, as you can see, there is a slight issue with <laughs> these guys hiding and I don't think I don't think our units are going to be able to find them, or shall we say kill them, at least. So it seems like, how many are there? I don't even know. I can't bring up the battle map, unfortunately. I can also not command them while I'm dead, of course. So I'm going to have to retreat and then just hope that I can force a surrender that's going to have to be it. That's going to have to be what I decide to do here. Yep, I'm going to have to do that. I am really sad about that, actually, because we would have easily won that if only I had survived. But obviously, that just happens sometimes. You know, sometimes you just get taken out and you don't necessarily mean to, obviously. There you go, 253. Two survived. Two of them, yeah. 
Okay, so surrender. Yes, there we go. You will be ransomed and your soldiers will live. I give you my word. Now, the one problem with that is that I don't... Do you actually get renown for sieges? I, I can't remember, actually. I don't, I don't really take notice of how much renown I get for the siege, usually, because it doesn't matter to me at that point. I'm just like, yes, thank you very much for giving me this. And, yeah, then I'm pretty happy about it. So, oh, well, never mind. It doesn't really matter, to be honest, in the grand scheme of things. But there you go. Anyway, we've taken all of the rescued prisoners. I don't even know whether I should take these guys right now. I mean, I guess I should, but I am probably not going to be able to sell them for a very long amount of time. So anyway, here you go. We now have a bunch of rather nice gear. Oh, yes. Very nice gear for our units to take. We're going to take all of that. There we go. I'm going to take this horse because it might be pretty decent. You know, it might be pretty nice. And war arrows. Really? No one wanted those war arrows? Are you serious? No one wanted those? I'm actually going to just perform the upgrading again. Yeah, there you go. They took the war arrows this time. That's very weird. I'm a little bit worried now that they, they're missing out on really good stuff. Oh, well, never mind. Okay, I'm just going to take it. Why not? Oh, yeah. By the way, this is an example of a shield in Gekakuja, or technically it is a parrying dagger of sorts. I mean, it's a it's an offhand weapon, and if you use a one-handed weapon, then you can, you know, you can kind of seem like you're dual-wielding, which is actually a pretty nice touch, in my opinion. Anyway, let's do that. There we go. We could just leave all of that, and a lot of people have leveled up, which is absolutely fantastic. And we have taken Katsuyama Castle, and we're taking it for ourselves, and becoming... Oh, well, we are becoming something, but obviously I do need to appoint someone. Who should I appoint? Well, that's the thing. Gonosuke and Mei Ling actually get along quite well. Who else gets along? Well, I, I don't even know. Enrique, I don't particularly need Enrique, because Francisco does everything that he does, and a little bit better. So I'm going to give... I'm going to make Enrique our person here, our... What, what is it? Our minister. Yeah, there you go. So, I think that's fine. There we go. Okay, so, we know what we're going to call ourselves. Oh, yes. The Bear-Tilled Shogunate. Yes, or Shogunate, however you want to say it. Anyway, yeah, I, I actually i am unsure whether it is the Bear-Tilled Shogunate that I need to type in, or whether it's just Bear-Tilled Shogunate, because I know sometimes with the Mountain Blade, when you make a faction, and if you call it the something, then it's going to sometimes, in some sentences, display it as... The V. So it's going to be the V, Bear Till Trogonate. So I, hopefully that's not going to happen in this case. If it does, then I'm going to have to find a way to change it. But otherwise, I think we're fine. So we can now recruit volunteers if we so desire. We can build a prisoner tower. Do I want to build a prisoner tower? I don't have enough money for that, of course. Oh, yes, yeah, great. Yes, I want to change domestic policy. Yes, thank you very much. Okay, so high centralization reduces tax inefficiency. For the daimyo and raises it for vassals. Yeah, let's just go a little centralized. High aristocracy will improve the relations. Who will be able to... Yeah, that's okay. A little aristocratic. High serfdom reduces tax inefficiency. Uh-huh, but troops lose morale. Okay, we'll do usually peasants. Shall we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, fine. Let's just do usually peasants. Troop quality, we want that to be very high. Let's do great. And... Uh, this is the thing. I can probably make a huge amount of money by doing very much mercantilistic. Maximize exports while minimizing imports and increase government relation or regulation of industry. Okay, so we'll just go quite, quite mercantilist. Okay, that should be fine. Okay, so there you go. Oh, no, no, that does, it does seem to work. The Bertil Shogunate does actually seem to work, so that's rather nice. Okay, so let's level up our forces here because there is going to be an inevitable attack, obviously. Oh yeah, by the way, it would probably be a nice idea, just because I personally feel like the Uma Yumis are going to be better than anything, but I'm going to compare the two, and we're going to see, you know, which one is just outright better. Personally, I would probably go with the Uma Yumis, because they're much better in an actual field battle, because they have mounts. But let's just take a look. So 251 archery, that's worse than the Uma Yumi. And they have 7 in power draw, which is better than the Uma Yumi. But the proficiency is remarkably different. So if you take a look here, they have 342 proficiency, 4 power draw. So they lose 3 power draw, but they gain about 100 
in archery proficiency and a mount and all that sort of thing. So I personally feel like the Uma Yumi is a little bit better, but that's just me. I don't know. I, I think maybe if you really want a standing army and you don't want them to like walk around or anything, then obviously getting Hatamoto archers is perfectly fine. So shall we level up our forces or shall we just, I mean, shall we level up our companions? That's the thing. I suppose we do need to because they are obviously going to need to be able to equip better gear, aren't they? So yes. Anyway, let's just get some two-handed here. There we go. Nagako has also leveled up. She is an absolute beast, as we all know, so I'm just going to level up her power strike and strength and... Well, she's going to eventually... She's going to be a, an archer as well, but I don't know whether I really want her to be an archer. I think that's actually maybe a bit of a waste because she is just in general amazing. So I think what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to start specking her into leadership because we could make her a lord or a, shall we say a vassal, and that might make more sense than making her into another warrior archetype, which we already have in abundance, basically. Because we do have Gonosuke, we do have, you know, everyone else, basically, and our army is basically a warrior archetype, so not really necessary to go for anything else. Now, this guy is absolutely amazing at pole arms, so I'd love to be able to get him something else, but I suppose athletics is probably the best thing for him. Anything else here? Well, yeah, we have a huge amount of companions leveling up. Oh my. Yeah, really. Okay, so let's just go for more of that. There we go. I need to go for some Weapon Master soon, I believe. And Teruyo. Yeah, another point in strength. Thank you very much. Okay, so I think I'm just going to go for another point in power draw here. Just to make her even better at the job that she already does. And there you go. Okay, that's absolutely fine. Now, we have, of course, leveled up as well. What are we going to do? Well, it would be, I, I don't know, I suppose Athletics would be pretty good, Weapon Master, maybe, I don't know. Iron Flesh, I suppose, would be fine. So let's just go for an additional point in Agility, and go for another point in Iron Flesh there. We might even be able to get to 30 Strength, which would be pretty amazing, because then we'll have 10 in, in all the attack skills, and Iron Flesh would, would, would basically have, what... I don't know, a huge amount of HP, 75 HP or something, 76 HP, that would be pretty amazing. Oh well, anyway, let's just level up our pole arms a little bit, and now we are going to wait here for some time. I have a bad feeling about this, because this guy is no doubt going to be one of these guys that is just, I don't know, he's going to be quite annoying, isn't he? So let's just have a look. What does he have? Actually, not much. He doesn't seem to have very good units, so I think we might be able to prevail here. I'm going to recruit these samurai because we're going to need a little bit of extra help, I suppose, even though they are pretty low level. I'm very much hoping that no other vassal turns up. And we have been awarded the right to carry a banner, which is actually fantastic. I, I didn't realize that we hadn't picked one yet, but yeah. Now, I wonder whether they still have the same symbol that Bruce Beartilt used all those years ago. Let's have a look. I believe it was the symbol for water. So it would be kind of nice, and you know, maybe we'll be able to see if we can get that again. I'm not entirely sure if we will be able to, or maybe if I'm able to even remember it at this point. Where is it? I think I will remember it once I see it, but maybe it's been changed or removed or something like that. I think it's no longer here. That's actually a bit of a shame. That is a bit of a shame, but they do have some very nice designs. I have no idea which one to go for, actually. I would like to get something demon-like, you know, like the mask that we're currently wearing. I think that would actually be really cool. So maybe if we could do something like that. But it seems like I'm unable to. I mean, there's a... Is that a snake or... What, what is that? It looks like a snake or something, but... Uh, it seems like there won't be anything here that we can really do. Is that... Is that a food dog or something? Is that a food dog? I'm actually unsure. That's a crane, I assume. Uh, I don't know. There's just so many designs here and I'm just unsure. Uh, maybe we should go for the black and red. Let's go for the black and red. Why not? That seems cool. Okay, so there you go. We're getting some right to rule because Mari is back. That's fantastic. We can also send someone else off relatively quickly as well. Let's just put her up here. 
And I'm gonna send off... Who am I gonna send off? Teruya, maybe? Gonosuke? Uh, have I already sent off Gonosuke, actually? No, I haven't. Okay. Well, yes, would you then support my cause? Yeah, there you go. Okay, well, he's gonna go off. He's actually really good, so maybe I shouldn't have sent him off right now, because, well... I don't know, maybe a polearm user is not going to be really good. Okay, so appoint a prominent samurai from the area, and that is our treasurer, of course. I'm, I'm pretty happy to have a treasurer, actually. Oh, no. Now they're now they're attacking my village. I, I don't even know whether I should really just attack them or something. Oh, no, there you go. He's apparently coming in. All right, let's do this. Oh, oh, oh. It's at night. I'm actually really sad now because I was really hoping that this would not be at night. I really hate fighting in the night time actually, but oh well. I suppose that's just how it goes. Okay, so why are the gates open? Can I close these gates or do they just close automatically? Or maybe I, I don't know, maybe there's something else that I need to do. But we have, oh wow, they've already got the first, first gate down to 78%, 50% even. I think actually... You don't even need to attack the gate. I think they just reduce in strength the more units you have next to it. I think that's probably what it actually is. So I'm just going to shoot in third person now because even though I'd like to get headshots, there are so many units here, it's kind of not even necessary, I think. I can just literally shoot away and do damage <laughs> to my own units. Yes, do damage to my own units. Yeah, that's exactly what I do, isn't it? Ah, uh, oh well, never mind. Okay, so let's just go in. Let's just go in with our huge two-handed and do some major damage, hopefully. Yes, take that. Take that. Oh wow, we are doing very, very well so far. I think it's because they send in... The vassals tend to send in their weakest units first. And that is a pretty decent strategy, because obviously if the weaker units are able to at least deal a little bit of damage to the defending force, then they can then send in their very, very good units and mop up and completely sweep us. But if they sent in their strong units to begin with, then maybe it would be even better because we wouldn't even, I don't know, we wouldn't even kill any of them. So they'd be even stronger for the, you know, ongoing rounds and things. So maybe, I don't know, maybe it would be better for them to do it like that. But, oh well, I don't really mind because obviously they're, they're trying to kill us and that's not very nice. So we're going to try our very best to defend. Okay, come on. Come on, am I, am I actually, so this is the thing, this is why I hate fighting at night, I really can't see anything very easily. It's very difficult to see. Oh, and I, I think I may have overstepped my bounds a little bit by going in here, but this weapon is absolutely amazing for sieges. I mean, I think everyone that has played this particular version of Gekokuja and has this kind of weapon will know that that is definitely the case, because I mean, just look at how insane the speed is. The speed is insane, the reach is insane, everything about it is just amazing, and I am frankly quite surprised that this weapon even exists, because I would have thought that something this big, you know, with this much reach, would respond in a very, very slow manner, but it's actually much faster than that, so I'm very, very pleased about that. Okay, so can I... Oh no, he's actually shimmying? Are you serious? You're actually shimmying back and forth. You are terrible. You are absolutely terrible, sir. Okay, well, you're dead now, at least. Let's see if I can get a headshot with this. Can I get a headshot? now? Never mind. There you go. We, they didn't even get past the first gate. Isn't that amazing? That was a really, really nice defense. 34 renown as well. We are definitely going to need that. Definitely going to need that. So there you go, 156. We lost 8, which is still pretty bad, because obviously I haven't transferred all of the units from Sado yet. As soon as I transfer all of the units from Sado, we are going to have an amazing, an amazing, shall we say, well, stronghold. Yes, that's the word I'm looking for. All right, so everyone is increasing with us apart from the Nambu clan. The Bear Tilt Shogunate. Yes, I'm actually pretty happy with that name. Maybe I should have called it just Bear Tilt Shogunate. I'm actually unsure about that. Oh, well, never mind. Okay, so... I'm going to let everyone choose things here. I think a, a couple of them have just gained 7 strength, so they're now able to use better armor at the very least. Maybe I'm going to do it again. See if they can... No, they don't want to take those war arrows. I find it weird that they don't take the war arrows and then they do take the war arrows. I don't, yeah, look at that. They take the war arrows now. That is super weird. I don't even know what's going on with those war arrows. It seems like everyone's just like, oh yes, but no, I, I don't really want these. And then they, then they do take them and it's kind of weird. Look at that. Did they? Yeah. Oh no, they've actually... 
Okay, there's some weird stuff going on. I don't even know. Okay, we're just going to leave that. Thank you very much. Okay. So there you go, that was our first siege defense, and we have a number of companions leveling up once again. Let's just level up these guys. And Oh, I have no money. Yeah, that's actually, <laughs> that's a big problem. That is a big problem. I'm probably going to go to Kubota, oh, if I can. It's actually under siege right now. But yeah, I'm going to go to Kubota, sell my stuff here. And how is my weekly budget doing? Not very well. Not very well, actually. Has this been raided? It is being raided. Okay, so I guess what I'm going to do off screen, because I don't really have much time. But next time I actually load up, I'm probably going to go over there and kill that vassal if I can. So I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.